good morning so let us uh, continue with the the flame height correlations so we have seen that for uh, diffusion flame the flame extent or the flame height is one of the important characteristic and uh, roper has proposed correlations for flame height for different types of burners having circular ports square ports rectangular ports and so on and uh, here the roper's correlation for circular port burner is given as seen in the scaling analysis the flame height is dependent on the volumetric flow rate of the fuel qf and uh, this this correlation basically is due to several experimental results using different types of fuels and uh, here the ambient temperature t infinity and the fuel temperature tf have been varied also so that ratio also has taken uh, has been taken into account one important uh, parameter is s which is the molar stoichiometric oxidizer to fuel ratio so if you consider a reaction between methane and air stoichiometric reaction so here the value of s is calculated as 2 into 4.76 divided by that is the number of moles of the oxidizer oxidizer has 1 mole of o2 3.76 moles of n2 that is 1 mole of air we can say into 2 times that so 2 into 4.76 divided by 1 so this can also be written as for any hydrocarbon cx hy that is x number of carbon atoms and y number of hydrogen atoms s can be written as x plus y by 4 divided by the mole fraction of oxygen in the air stream that is usually if air normal air is used then this will be equal to 0.21 so you can see that not the mass based fuel air, air fuel ratio is used here it is molar based oxidizer fuel ratio the empirical constant is 1330 and uh, this correlation is seen to predict the flame height for several fuels from the circular port burners where the fuel stream is subjected to different temperatures also so it's very very useful correlation and uh, this correlation it can also be extended to the environment where air is enriched with uh, more o2 for example xo2 normally in standard air is 0.21 this may be increased to say 0.3 or a pure oxidation oxygen environment 0.1 etc so 1.0 etc so in that case also this correlation seems to be helpful so roper's correlation is very important and uh, useful for several types of fuels and uh, uh, it actually takes uh, takes care of the mole fraction of the oxygen in the oxidizer now the factors affecting the laminar flame height diffusion flame height is type of the fuel which is actually dependent on s then diluents added to the fuel stream or the oxidizer stream so we can say xo2 xf etc similarly the amount of air added to the fuel stream this is called primary aeration so what we do is in normal jet diffusion flame only fuel is sent but in order to reduce the flame height it is possible to add some air in the fuel stream itself however we will ensure that this air which is added which is called primary air will result in a mixture of fuel and air which will not be flammable so this will have more fuel and some amount of air so this will be in a rich mixture that is the phi will be greater the equal ratio will be much greater than 1 and uh, this value of phi will be greater than the upper flammable limit of the mixture so that it will not be ignited that means this requires extra air from the ambient to burn so when you do primary aeration 
what happens is the flame height de decreases ok. So, you can see that when diluents are added the flame height actually increases when O2 mole fraction <coughs> increases the oxygen mole fraction increases the flame length decreases. For the fuel we can say that the H by C ratio of the fuel if it decreases then the flame height increases. That means hydrogen is highly reactive if the hydrogen to carbon ratio decreases then the flame height uh, basically increases. A small reduction in the mole fraction of oxygen results in a notable increase in the flame height. That is if O2, XO2 reduces from 0 0.21 to say 0.18 then you can see a notable reduction. Similarly, when you increase it basically from 0 0.21 to 0 0.3 the flame height decreases. So, as an example you can say that when you have a methane injected into pure oxygen in the environment we will see that the flame length reduces or it is only one fourth of the value where you get what you get from the methane injected into the air environment ok. So, that much reduction is possible. So, primary air action also reduces the flame. Now, when the fuel stream is diluted with inert gas see for example, if I have fuel plus nitrogen then the S yes value can be obtained from the formula given below here. So, basically you can see that the S yes without any only when pure fuel is uh, fed it is X plus Y by 4 by capital X O2 that is the mole fraction of oxygen. Now, when diluent is also present in the fuel stream then I have to write in the denominator 1 by 1 minus X dilute this is the mole fraction of the diluent that is such as N2. When uh, you add more and more nitrogen the flame length decreases because you have to burn only lesser fuel. So, the factors affecting the flame lengths are clearly illustrated in this and Robert's correlation is able to take into account of these effects to predict the flame height for several fuels under several conditions. Now, let us talk about the primary air. As I told you the primary air is specified as percentage of the. So, this air is primary air is percentage of stoichiometric air. So, if stoichiometric air is 100 percent I may inject only 10 percent or 20 percent like that. So, for example, this photographs illustrate when you add more and more air in the fuel stream what happens. The first one is that is a given fuel flow rate which is more than the smoke point. So, I will see the visible smoke here there is no primary air 0 percent primary air is there. So, only fuel jet comes out and its flow rate is such that there is a so it is more than the smoke point ok. Now, what I do I supply 20 percent of the stoichiometric air along with the fuel. So, the primary air here 20 percent means 20 percent of the stoichiometric air required for the given fuel flow rate. If I supply that you see that the smoke point the smoke does not appear and the flame length has reduced from this to this flame length has reduced. Now, we increase to 40 percent again I see the flame height significantly drops ok. Now, this 40 percent is critical because when you supply until 40 percent maybe less slightly less than 40 percent then it is not premix combustion that means the fuel LPG plus 40 percent of the stoichiometric air which is supplied is not going to produce a flammable mixture. So, the mixture reactant mixture of fuel and 40 percent air 40 percent of the stoichiometric air will not be flammable. But when you go beyond 50 percent etcetera 
you will go into the premise combustion. That is 50 percent is just flammable, 60 percent etc. So, you can see that uh, more and more growth of the blue zone appears here, more and more growth of the blue zone and if you go to 80 percent you can see the inner cone very clearly. That is this is more and more premix type of combustion. So, here, here also the, the inner cone appears, here also it starts. So, the main point is when you have diffusion flame, you can add primary air, but you should ensure that the primary air is going to cause a give a mixture to us which is not flammable itself, but it may require, it may require more air to burn. But the consequence of adding primary air is very simple. The smoke which is produced, these, these are all done at the same fuel flow rate. So, addition of say 20 percent primary air itself has stopped the smoke coming out of the flame, reduce the flame length nicely. When you go to 30 to 40 percent etc., you can see that the flame is well behaved, no smoke appears, the flame length also is very short. That means, I can control my flame length by suitably injecting some air as a percentage of stoichiometric air along with the fuel. So, in that case, how will you predict the flame length? The formula remains the same 1330 QF, this is the formula T infinity by TF divided by natural logarithm of 1 plus 1 by S. But the way you calculate S will be different. If it is pure jet diffusion flame, this is the formula you use. If you use any diluent, you have to use this formula. If you use primary air, then you have to use this formula. So, here the formula is slightly tricky 1 minus x primary that is the fraction of the stoichiometric air supply. This may be say 0.1. If it is 10 percent of the stoichiometric air is 0.1, if it is 20 percent it is 0 0.2 etc. That is the fraction of the stoichiometric air supply divided by x pi plus 1 by s fuel. This s fuel is nothing but x plus y by 4 divided by x O2. That is the s value when only fuel is sub supplied through the port. Do you understand? Only fuel is supplied. How will you calculate s? Go back. This is the formula. Use this formula. This is called s fuel in this formula. Okay. So, the main advantage of adding primary air is to reduce the flame length, visible smoke formation and so on. But we all normally ensure that we operate in the diffusion flame regime. That means the flame will not be able to be ignited with the mixture which is formed due to the addition of the primary air. So, this is very important. Now, let us talk about we continue the experiments basically here. In this case, you can see that the jet velocity is given, the same burner port. So, that if you multiply the jet velocity with the burner port area, you will get the volumetric flow rate. So, what is observed here is basically when you have a small flow rate, you have a laminar flame and the laminar flame, this is actually by methane. So, there is no big smoke etcetera coming out when you increase the flow. But what you observe is in the laminar regime, the flame height basically increases and uh, it actually has lot of oscillations when it goes to trans uh, transition regime. So, here you can see that some oscillations are formed, but the oscillations are enhanced the flame goes up and down vigorously when you go to the transition regime and in the turbulent regime, turbulent regime, so laminar transition regime and goes to fully turbulent regime, the flame height normally remains almost at a constant height, but based upon the jet velocity for the given diameter, we cannot anchor the flame for every port. So, you can see that there is a flame lift off lift off occurs, that is one of the instability. So, normally you can see that these are all anchored flames, but here slight lift off happens, but lift off is very significant in the uh, turbulent uh, regime. 
where the velocity is increases and uh, you can see when lift off occurs what happens is there is a partial premixing of air and the fuel so this lift off will cause some premixed combustion to occur because the fuel comes out but it doesn't burn immediately in the uh, just the exit of the burner port it is the flame starts to form only at a certain height from the exit of the burner port so within that time the fuel has mixed with oxygen that means when the mixture reaches the flame zone it is somewhat premixed so this is not complete when the lifted flame occurs it is not completely non premixed flame basically so these are some characteristics this is again by the ropers uh, experimental study and uh, you can see that theoretically also he has given some values but theory predictions are somewhat off because because of the uncertainty in the flame length and oscillations and so on basically what happens is in the laminar regime you see a good increase in the turbulent regime actually the flame oscillates so it reaches the maximum value and drops and uh, the turbulent regime it goes to a constant value this is what is observed for several fuels so now let us see some characteristics of jet diffusion flames which are turbulent in nature okay so unlike this case where the flames are lifted off we will try to choose a diameter where we can see that the flame is anchored close to the burner not very much lifted off but one important characteristic is the flame height this is basically the reynolds number reynolds number which is dis displayed here for reynolds number starting from 2700 see in a circular pipe when fluid comes out the transition occurs from laminar to turbulent at a reynolds number of about 2000 so now we can say that when the flow reynolds number is beyond 2000 it may reach the turbulent condition so now 2700 to about double of that the reynolds number has been varied and uh, you can see that the flame height doesn't change much so then the turbulent regime the fluid uh, the fuel flow rate is increased beyond a critical value of reynolds number or e critical so that the flame becomes turbulent so how the transition occurs basically is you can go back and see here you can see that the flame is well behaved the oscillations are seen that is due to some small disturbances in the entrainment but the entire surface becomes oscillatory and uh, you can see that the flame becomes turbulent at a particular point so in this case you can see that tremendous amount of oscillations occur all over the flame height and the characteristics of the flame is almost the same for example if you see there is some blue zone some dark zone and bright zones here where the soot radiation occurs so there are several advantages of turbulent flames when you operate it without any lift off the advantages are what happens is the flame height is same You, you even if you double the flow rate of the fuel so if you have a combustor say long combustor where you inject the fuel alone at very high reynolds number now we you have to have a turn down ratio for the burner that means the maximum flow rate or maximum power of the burner divided by the minimum power of the burner when you operate because always you will not operate at a constant power so when you operate the burner at a turn down ratio of maximum to minimum power rating okay now you can see that if the regime is turbulent burning regime the flame extent will be always be the almost same it is not going to vary much that means within a certain length the combustion will be complete so that you can burn more fuel the flame volume remains almost the same but you can burn more and more fuel that is advantage of turbulent jet diffusion flame when you require some length of the flame uh, which is not going to change much but you have to burn more and more fuel you can go for this then one more thing is the 
these flames are oscillatory in nature that means that the mixing is enhanced why these oscillations occurs because these oscillations occurs due to turbulent eddies the turbulent eddies are of different length scales it may be as big as the diameter of the burner itself it may be some integrated scale which is slightly less then it may be smaller scale kolmograph scale and so on so on so there are several scales of turbulent eddies that is small to large eddies which will interact with the flame and cause these oscillations okay now what is the advantage of this the advantage is this turbulent eddies will enhance the mixing of fuel and oxidizer so due to the enhanced mixing even if you increase the flow rate to double its value the flame length is very small that means that when you increase the flow rate more and more mixing enhancement occurs as the around so increases so that the the available oxygen is found within the same height of the uh, flame extent so that is the advantage of this but there are some disadvantages that as i told you the flame will lift off but if you control your diameter of the burner etc then you cannot you may you may have to uh, vary the diameter so that the velocity the jet velocity will reduce but the reynolds number can be the same because we can see the reynolds number is dependent on what reynolds number rho u d divided by mu so mu n rho will be constant so when you increase your diameter for the same reynolds number you can decrease so you can operate the same reynolds number but with a lower injection velocity so the velocity is the one which causes the flame lift off because it is we have seen that the time for convection will be the particular length divided by the velocity so if the velocity increases the time residence time for the reactants will reduce so the flame lifts off okay so the advantage of using slightly higher diameter burner is to lower the velocity to operate at the same reynolds number if we do that then we will we can avoid the flame lift off but operating the turbulent mode but there are some disadvantages also for the turbulent flame because the turbulent flame are basically noisy okay so they are not smooth and they, they are noisy and all and uh, if you have some other instability triggered then the flame may lift off and even extinguish so these are some disadvantages you have to carefully operate that means the operating regime should be carefully fixed for this the advantage is it will have the same volume of burning second one is the mixing is enhanced several times the molecular mixing will be enhanced by 500 times 1000 times etc in the turbulent regime so that you will you can burn more and more fuel in a given volume or length the oscillations are as i told you due to the contribution of different eddies of different scales and uh, the molecular level mixing so just by concentration gradient so molecular molecular diffusivity will be enhanced to turbulent diffusivity which will be several times 500 times 1000 times and so on the due to this enhanced mixing the turbulent flame length remains almost constant that means the volume of burning remains almost constant this is very important but there will be increase in the noise level of the flame when it is become turbulent because when you mix the jet acoustics will trigger and uh, more and more noise will be produced but we have to be careful of one more point that after a crucial flow rate occurs so jet exit velocity exceeds a value then the flame may lift off and uh, further it may extinguish also so these are the points which we have to understand and take care when you do the design of burners operating the burner at a given turn down ratio that is the maximum power to the minimum power now let us see why the turbulent flame height remains constant okay so the molecular diffusivity which is d is replaced by turbulent mass diffusivity as i told you correct so d laminar we can say r molecular diffusivity can be replaced by dt turbulent diffusivity but we have to understand one important point 
see in laminar case the molecular diffusivity nu mass diffusivity d thermal diffusivity alpha these three may be different they need not be equal but if you go to turbulent flow nu t that is the turbulent molecular diffusivity which we say as turbulent eddy viscosity then turbulent mass diffusivity turbulent thermal diffusivity these will be same because these properties are fluid properties in a laminar flow but these properties are flow properties because it is aided by the eddies flow properties in turbulent flow so obviously we can say that nu t will be equal to the mass diffusivity of turbulent in uh, dt which will be equal to alpha t which need not be true for the laminar flow so the properties the molecular diffusivity mass diffusivity thermal diffusivity these properties of fluid will now be properties of the flow so we can say that dt will be equal to nu t so that's what we are trying to put here dt is equal to nu t here that is turbulent eddy viscosity now that is one of the thing which we will first do second is this eddy viscosity can be expressed as a product of a turbulent mixing length it may be prandtl's mixing length that is very important parameter mixing length and the turbulent intensity so what is turbulent intensity so if you say i have a time data of a velocity v so turbulent flows are highly oscillatory so it is like this so it is not these are oscillatory such that you will see that these are not going to have a single frequency so it is multiple frequency oscillation what do you mean multiple frequency if you superimpose several sine waves of several amplitudes and uh, frequencies you get some structure some signature like this okay now here if you do the data collection for long time and take an average then what i get as an average value is v bar and at a given time instant okay say this time instant i can get a component which is oscillatory component ca called v dash so at any time instant uh, the velocity can be written as v bar plus v dash of t so this is basically the oscillations which we have so one more thing is the turbulent flow is actually three dimensional in nature even though see if you take a jet flow the jet flow has velocities <coughs> predominantly in the axial direction and radial direction <coughs> however the circumferential direction it will not have any mean velocity but when you take the oscillations in all the three directions you will have the oscillation values non zero so that is the turbulent intensity basically so we can also take when i say <coughs> v dash i am talking about this oscillatory component in the signature of the velocity which i measure using say hot wire anemometer the rms value is nothing but root mean square of that okay so i will say v v bar, uh, v dash square and take an average and take root of that that is called rms value so that is the represent representative of turbulent intensity so the eddy viscosity nu t can be written as lm into v dash rms which is equal to dt do you understand that is the concept here so why we are doing this noting the fact that nu t dt and alpha t are much much higher than corresponding laminar properties nu d and alpha 
and uh, nu d alpha d and dt are equal because they are dictated by the same type of eddies of different scales time and length scales so the length of the turbulent flame can be written as v r square by nu t so from where we get it go to the laminar part here laminar flame v e the jet exit velocity r square by 2d so now this d is changed to nu t correct so come to the turbulent part here so okay just i put the two factor i have taken out because this nu t itself is several times enhanced value of d so the 2d can be just taken as nu t here it's only a scaling analysis okay so we are not going to get the accurate value okay r is the burner port diameter burner port radius and v is the velocity mean velocity mean velocity and the nu t is the eddy viscosity which is equal to lm into v dash rms that's it so from this how will you get the value of the lf so that again in the scaling analysis let us take how this lm and v dash will vary so the turbulent mixing length is a length scale so it can be like an integral scale where its order of magnitude can be equivalent to a jet radius r so lm can be replaced by r similarly you can see the oscillations this oscillation itself can be of the order of the jet velocity itself so i can say v dash rms is replaced by v so v v cancels r this cancel so we can say that lft depends on r that's it so for the turbulent flame once the turbulence has fully set up okay it's not in the transition region go to fully turbulent the flame length depends on the value of r only that means if you have a constant diameter burner then the flame length will not vary in the turbulent regime it will how to vary the uh, the flame length vary r vary use a different diameter burner that's all so this is what we have seen in the previous slides here for the same diameter burner here the r is same for all the cases irrespective of the donald's number you can see the flame height is almost same that means flame height depends only on r not on the fuel flow rate qf volumetric flow rate of the fuel so that is the scaling analysis so from the scaling analysis for the laminar jet diffusion flame we have shown that it depends on qf that is volumetric flow rate of the fuel inversely proportional to the molecular diffusivity but for the turbulent no only the geometric parameter dictates that's all